All right, gang, in this lecture, we're going to go over troubleshooting. So troubleshooting is going to be pretty much the entire exam. This, this, and that is broke. How did it break? How do you fix it? So in this actual lecture, we're going to go over a bunch of different scenarios with a bunch of different devices, a bunch of different areas and domains that's covered on the test just to get you better acclimated to um, the test format. All right, so let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into it. First scenario. Jenny was notified that the laptop is not booting. It is discovered that there are no system like sounds or display when the power button is pressed. Which of the following should Jenny attempt first in the troubleshooting process? I'll give you guys a couple seconds to think that over. All right, so. What Jenny should do, the first thing, all right? So make sure that when you're going through the exam that you're picking up on those signs. That doesn't say the best thing, the next thing, what's the first thing that Jenny should do? First thing you should always do is get uh, disconnect AC and battery power and hold the power button for several seconds. Sound good? Great. So like I said, the main um, purpose of this lecture is just to make sure that you get comfortable with the um, test types. And like I said, on um, the A-plus exam, um, none of this shit is really straightforward, all right? So um, if it is something straightforward, you know, good, great, uh, you did it. But a lot of times um, the questions are a little uh, convoluted, uh, may have a lot of extra stuff that you may not need, but just, you know, make sure that you become a sniper in there. Just, oh, I know exactly what they're asking me. Boom, I know what the answer is. All right, so next one. Which of the following would be the most important factor to consider when building a virtualization workstation? Out of all of these, what do we think? Just remember, um, virtualization workstations, sometimes they can be running on, on top of the operating system. They can be running on the actual uh, main devices or the host devices um, components. So what do you think out of this list would be, either for either one of those, what would be the most important? Easy. Maximum RAM and maximum CPU cores. So the maximum RAM and CPU cores would allow for processing to be a lot quicker and for it to be able to handle all the processes that the host machine as well as the virtual machines are running. Okay. Next up, as a request that the desktop system she is buying is able to be used at her vacation home in another country, as well as at home in the U.S., the technician is aware that the country mentioned has a different power requirements. Which of the following should Angela ensure the desktop contains? What do we think? This one should be a little bit easier. Easy. Perfect. Dual voltage option. So just remember, um, in a lot of other countries outside the U.S., the voltage is a lot higher. And if you don't have the voltage setting correctly or if you don't have a voltage selector at all, you may go to another country the electricity is a little bit too much, the wattage is a little bit too much, the voltage is a little bit too much, and it's going to blow your goddamn computer up. So just make sure that um, when you go to other countries or if you're somewhere that, you, that the voltage selector is um, selected for the correct country. Okay? Next up. Which of the following ray types allows for mirroring? All right, so mirroring just means that you pretty much have the exact same thing on several disks. So just like when you look in the mirror, bam, that's me, that's what I look like, it's an exact copy, that's exactly how it is um, with RAID. You can have striping or mirroring. Striping means that the data is split, mirroring means that an exact copy is on several disks. So out of these RAID levels, what provides mirroring? Easy. RAID 1 and RAID 10. Perfect, good, good. Uh, Jasmine is used, excuse me, Jasmine is asked to install Microsoft Office directly onto Aaron's computing device. Jasmine notifies Aaron that Office cannot be installed directly on that device. Which of the following device types does the customer most likely have? Easy, perfect. So a thin client, just remember a thin client is used for a specific purpose and it's usually, it usually doesn't actually have a, um, you know, detailed oriented setup or platform. So you wouldn't actually have Microsoft Office on a thin client. That would probably be put on top of a thick client. So just remember thin and thick 
doesn't have anything to do with actually uh, with actual size and shape or form factor. Thin meaning that there's a minimum amount of functionality. Thick meaning that there's a, a lot of functionality. Pretty much whatever you need that machine to do, it can do. Okay. Uh, Danielle reports that her company laptop cannot pick up a wireless connection. However, users working on their laptops in the common areas have internet connectivity. Which of the following is most likely the cause? Most likely. What is most likely the cause? And just remember on this um, exam, go for the easiest thing first and then work from there. Doesn't mean that the easiest thing is always the answer, but always start with the easiest thing and then uh, troubleshoot from there. Easy. Weak radio frequency signals, pretty much meaning that wherever Danielle is at, the wireless router or the hotspot may have interference or may be too far away from the actual hotspot. In the common area, it's probably exactly where the hotspot and the wireless router is located. So people that are closer to the hotspot are going to have a better signal. So if she moves closer to the common area, she'll probably have a better reception. All right, Albert just installed a new Soho router. Whenever a new user comes online and begins streaming media, browsing slows down for the other users. Which of the following settings can Albert adjust so the experience is universal for all users? What do we think? Another thing, gang, like I always say, acronyms, acronyms, acronyms. Make sure that you know what the acronyms stand for. If you study and you see acronym, you know, I know it's a lot of alphabet soup. I don't know if you like alphabet soup, but shit, you better start liking it because it's a lot of acronyms on the actual test. And a lot of times, the acronym can either give you the answer or at least show you what's not the answer, okay? So what do we think the answer is to this? Easy. Quality of service. So quality of service is a service where you can prioritize certain traffic, whether you want to level things out or if you want to prioritize traffic to a certain device, a certain port, certain area of the home, you can actually do that with quality of service. Uh, Erica notices fine black particles on printouts and in the printer itself. Which of the following tools is recommended to fix this? What do we think? All right, too easy. Toner, vacuum. So, um, Pretty sure you guys know, but I'll just run through all of them anyway. So denatured alcohol, that is a liquid. Uh, it could smear the toner and everything everywhere. And it can actually, you know, get, if you're inside of the printer, it can actually damage some of the components. Compressed air, all the particles are there. If you spray, it's going to spray all over you and spray all over the office. Then moist tile is the same issue as the other one. You may damage the internal components, but for sure you're going to smear all those black uh, toner particles. Okay, I know the black CPU with a small heat sink, small fans on the power supply, and a high-end graphics card. Which of the following is the recommended solution that will manage heat more effectively? So we think that this machine is producing a lot of heat. Out of these options, what would reduce that heat most effectively? Easily, a liquid cooling system. Easy, easy, easy. All right, Wilma is the shift leader for Bob's Biscuits. She needs to quickly check inventory of products. What device can help her accomplish this? What do we think? Easy. You guys are geniuses. Barcode scanner so you can scan, check the inventory, scan to actually scan in inventory if you're having a surplus or if you got a truck or something pull up and stuff like that. Uh, NFC modulator is not a real thing. RFI looper, not a real thing. And a label maker. That wouldn't do anything either. Naomi is unable to view any websites. After James, the head IT technician, runs a virus scan, malware is found. The malware has been redirecting all of Naomi's website requests. What will be the next troubleshooting step? What's the next thing that the IT tech should actually do? He ran a uh, virus scan and it came up with malware. What's the next thing you think he should do? Super easy. Establish a plan of action. So, gang, when you get into the actual box, this is how it's going to be set up. Marcus did X, Y, Z. Uh, Jane did blah, 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 blah. What's the next troubleshooting step? Or what troubleshooting steps have they completed? Okay. The owner of Jazzy Paint has three locations throughout the greater Chicago area. All locations need a minimum speed of one gigabyte per second. 
What type of network is Jazzy Paint most likely a part of? What do we think? Easy. So it brought up Chicago, which is a city. Man is a metropolitan area network. So like I said, those little small clues, you got to make sure that you can run through the question, decipher the information that you need, and then it's going to help you get the answer. All right, a pan is a personal area network. Couldn't be that. Can is a campus area network. Couldn't be that. And it's not a wireless link. All right, next up, password trouble tickets have risen by 20%. How can system admins reduce the amount of password-related trouble tickets? What do we think? So I'm going to give you the answer, and I'm going to give you a couple seconds for you to kind of mull over why you think that's the answer. So single sign-on is the answer, and single sign-on will reduce the password trouble tickets by 20%. Why do we think that would be the case? Perfect. Great. So single sign-on will reduce password-related ticks because people only have to remember one password. Instead of having to log on to the machine and then log on to their email and then log on to a platform and then log on to this and having a separate password for each one of those different platforms and each one of those different services, you can have single sign-on, which means that you sign on one time, you have access to multiple platforms, multiple services, multiple different softwares. Now, uh, since you guys are super smart, you probably say, well, shit, I can just have the same password for you know all the stuff I log into. No, that would be a terrible idea. Make sure that you change and have different passwords if whatever you're using doesn't have single sign-on, okay? Maria is a help desk lead for Tech Terror Inc. She is on a call when the device's hard drive she's working on begins to make a loud clicking noise. What is the first thing Maria should do? Easy, perfect. So the first thing she should do is inform the owner, whoever actually uh, owns the PC, that, hey, man, this hard drive is probably about to corrupt it's probably about to go bad so i would advise as you back all this stuff up a lot of times on a hard drive if you start hearing a clicking noise that's a indication that the mechanical parts inside of the hard drive are having a hard time and they're probably going to give out pretty soon and once they give out it's going to be hard to recover that data so the easiest thing would be to just tell the user hey i think that your hard drive is about to go kaput who the hell says kaput? Anyway, it's about the uh, <laughs> the break. It's not about the work anymore. So go ahead and uh, uh, back up your stuff. Okay. Next thing, Larry is using a web-based calendar. Which model is Larry using? Real simple. Easy. SaaS or software as a service. So Google Calendar, iCloud Calendar, any of those kind of calendars. Are considered software as a service meaning that you don't have to download anything that the actual software is in the cloud and as long as you got internet connection you can connect to it okay uh, your handheld tablet is no longer responding to your inputs when touch what is the first thing you should check the first thing easy perfect so first thing you should check is the digitizer settings Perfect. Good. Mario's phone will not charge when he connects his USB charger. When he uses wireless charging, the phone begins charging. When he uses the USB charger on other devices, they charge just fine. What should be the first thing Mario does to charge his phone with a USB charger? What's the first thing we think he should do? Easy. Perfect. First thing he should do is just clean out the phone charging port because there may be some gunk in there because the USB charger is working on other devices, so it's not the charger, so it must be the charging port or something wrong with that actual phone, okay? All right, some guy is doing a RAM upgrade on his friend's computer. He unplugged the PC, took out the old RAM, put in the new RAM, closed the PC, and plugged it back in, then he left. Did he follow all troubleshooting steps? What do we think? No, he didn't. He didn't verify full system functionality. So he just replaced the old RAM and said, hey, I guess it worked because this RAM is new. But you still got to turn on the PC, still got to turn on the device and make sure that whatever issue that the device is going through, that you fix that and no new issues have actually arised. OK, Daryl has a big presentation that he's nervous about. He turns on a projector to begin his presentation. 
After a few slides, a projector bulb turns off. What should a technician do to resolve the issue? <clears throat> Easy, perfect. So projectors have cooling fans because they get hot. And a lot of times the cooling fan may turn off, it may stop spinning, the motor may burn out on the actual cooling fan. A lot of times you have to replace the cooling fan. And just as uh, extra precaution, you can replace the bulb as well. There's no point in replacing the cooling fan and not the bulb because the bulb may go out next. So just, hey, let me throw in a new bulb and get a cooling fan. Bam, problem solved. All right, gang, so that was your troubleshooting scenarios. Just to get you better acclimated to the way that the test may pose questions to you. I wish you so much luck. Good luck. Make sure you reach out to me when you actually pass the exam. Another than that, I'll see you in class.